Have you become enlightened? How to become enlightened? What will it be like after enlightenment? Why we should pursue enlightenment? This is what every practitioner questions everyone wants to know. It is said that less than a one million people on earth are enlightened. That is to say, among one million people, only one person is enlightened. Why so rare? The answer is that enlightenment is not because it is too difficult, but because it's too simple. So simple that you can't imagine. Just like fish living in water. Because we get along day and night. Thus ignoring the existence of water. Just like the air we breathe every day. Because it is provided free of charge. As a result, we often forget the existence of air. Man can invent the atomic bomb. Land on the moon. Explore Mars. Because humans have the smartest brains on Earth. But enlightenment has nothing to do with the brain. Nothing to do with knowledge. Nothing to do with experience. It's difficult to say. That's the only thing that's hardest to understand. So the simplest way. Just give up all mental effort. Once this happens, your enlightenment will appear immediately. Enlightenment exists. There is no doubt about this. With my more than 10 years of practice experience and final experience results and swear by the highest honor of my life, I don't have any doubt. Enlightenment is 100% present. Just like the bed we sleep on every day. The shoes you wear on walking. Really, really true. As for how to become enlightened. What will it be like after enlightenment? With the vast number of people who love spiritual practice. Let's share the infinite secrets. Chapter 1. What is the greatest achievement in life? Chinese novelist and short story writer Mo Yan once mentioned. Human society is noisy mess. Feasting and feasting. Sensual dogs and horses. Looks incredibly complicated. But think about it seriously. It is just the pursuit of wealth by the poor. Rich people pursue pleasure and excitement. Basically, this is it our life. He also mentioned whether rich or poor. Four major temptations in life. The temptation of money, fame, power and beauty. Mo Yan was right. It's just that what he said wasn't comprehensive enough. He only told half the truth. What's the other half of the truth? Say it's the truth just for the brain level. In fact, there is no real truth at all. So, what is the other half so-called the truth? The other half of the so-called the truth. There are very rare people. After satisfying material and spiritual needs, struggling to pursue the needs of the soul, they long for tranquility and joy. Explain the spiritual world. It is what Buddhism calls the true Buddha nature that people possess. That is the state of enlightenment. They satisfy the material level and spiritual needs. Suddenly, I feel like there is a child deep inside me. Very hungry and a very noisy child. Because he's starting to wake up. He also needs to grow. Many years ago, famous Hong Kong movie star Leslie Chung. It's a very typical case. It is said that Leslie Chung committed suicide by jumping off a building. In his personal account, has approximately $300 million in deposits. Say so. Leslie Chung has no material confusion at all. In addition, Leslie Chung's career is also booming. Acting, singing and TV series are all popular. In terms of achievement and success, it is second to none. It's also considered a success on a spiritual level. So why did he choose to commit suicide? Because, after Leslie Chum was satisfied with the above two aspects, suddenly another child inside me woke up. That child is the soul child. He felt very helpless. He never noticed before. Deep in my heart there is a child. He has always ignored the existence of this child. How can we make this inner child growing up? How can we take good care of this spiritual child? Where can I get soul child milk powder? He is so confused. He couldn't resist the torment of the inner child. So he chose an extreme way. Ended his own life and that of his inner child. To achieve a spiritually rich life. Definitely better than the material level. Spiritual life satisfaction. Something that would be 10,000 times more luxurious. Because this is a completely different game. When a person is used to it. Already familiar with. All games on the physical and spiritual levels suddenly got to play a completely different game. The result is nothing but confusion. The result can only be more confusion. 
because of the spiritual game. It's not about planning, it's about execution. What can be obtained through hard work, striving and struggle? On the contrary, spiritual realization of life. What is needed is not working hard or striving for it. What is needed is to give up and let go. The pursuit of the ordinary at the spiritual level. What we pursue at the spiritual level is extraordinary. What we pursue at the spiritual level is calmness. What is pursued at the spiritual level is excitement. At the spiritual level, the harder you work, the more frustrated you become. It can be achieved by struggling at the spiritual level. Subtraction is needed at the spiritual level. If you need it on a spiritual level, you need to add something. The difference is too big. Pursue a spiritual life. Live in a state of complete enlightenment. Definitely very luxurious. Not one million people on earth have this kind of blessing. Materially successful, succeed spiritually. At present, it has reached 5% in world. That is to say, out of 100 people, there are at least 5 people who can be in your life. Through hard work, achieve great wealth and spiritual satisfaction. But only a 1 million people. It is possible to go deep into the spiritual level. But no matter how rich we are materially, how successful in career, the mental frustration is always there. There, we will always repeat the tragedy of life in material and spiritual aspects. There is never a perfect life, only a life full of frustration and confusion. How can we enter the spiritual level of perfection? How can we get a glimpse of the beautiful scenery when the fog is open? There are three ways. First, through meditation. There are many ways to meditate, such as yoga, meditation, etc. In this kind of meditation, slowly calm down all kinds of thoughts in your brain. Let your body completely relax. Then there is a chance to open the door to the soul. The brain is always a distraction. Only the brain is quiet. Only then can the door of the soul be opened. Excuse me. How many people in the world can quiet down the brain? According to incomplete statistics, every second, our brains persist tens of thousands of pieces of information. So much information hits the brain. So many thoughts running through my brain. Quieting your brain is no easy task. Second, through concentration. Concentration has always been the door to the soul. Very good road. Concentration is a very focused effort. But such efforts have always been of no use. Only when we focus to the extreme. And then the moment I let go of my concentration. The moment after giving up all efforts to focus. We have the opportunity to step into the door of the soul. The process of concentration must exhaust all efforts. This ultimate effort. Just to let go suddenly at the last moment. In the gap between extreme efforts and sudden letting go. Have a chance. That is the gap in the brain where there is complete despair. We can enter the door of the soul. Third through love, like. It has always been the most direct way to enter the door of the soul. Shortest distance, but unfortunately, we are in this material world. Success is preached everywhere here. Inspirational world of life. Already lost the ability to love. We have been all afraid of love. We've been running away from love. We waste love all the time. If you love flowers, flowers contain all the beauty of the spiritual world. If you love music, music contains all the inspiration for the spiritual world. Love is the best gift in the spiritual world. A person who lives in the spiritual world must be a compassionate person. He must be a friendly and kind person. Therefore, it is easy to pursue wealth. It's easy to pursue success. It's definitely not easy to pursue tranquility and indifference. Because it's good to be quiet. It's okay to be indifferent. It's not achieved through hard work at all. That's an encounter. Because the soul is always in your own home. Just because you have been working hard outside. Just ignore the treasures at home. Suddenly one day, you have made your life. All the efforts you can make. You come home extremely tired. Open the door and your heart is at home. We are waiting for your visit with a smile on our face. Chapter 2 The Fourth and Simplest Way to Enlightenment Instant Enlightenment There used to be three to five years. I am very confused. I have read almost all the Zen cases. Hope to find an answer in it. What is enlightenment? Look at those Zen masters. Stay in a state of enlightenment every moment. Very envious.
but I do not know. I can't experience such a wonderful state either. I even doubt. Is that state an illusion? Is it a separate deception? That is to say, so-called enlightenment doesn't exist at all. Those seemingly ridiculous Zen cases, what master? Hit the apprentice on the head with a wooden stick. What master? Give a loud shout to the disciples. What master? Cut off the apprentice's fingers. Then the disciple became enlightened in an instant. Then I thought, so amazing, so simple. I wish I could find a master to give me a beating. Then a miracle happened, but unfortunately, it's because a miracle has never happened to me. Until one day, I met an unattractive person. Young teacher, it's a woman, not tall, has a round face. Don't like to communicate with others. That day, I can never forget in this life. I saw her reading a Vajra Sutra. So I was very interested and came forward to ask for advice. Teacher Mu, you also like the Vajra Sutra. I like it too. I just can't understand the Vajra Sutra. There is a saying that the past is hard to come by. I am unable to get it now. The future is unattainable. May I ask what this sentence actually says? She didn't even raise her head. Don't say anything. Suddenly, she stood up quickly. Slammed the table with her right hand. Yell, why should I tell you? I was caught of God. I was stunned by her completely unexpected reaction. I think my soul might be at that moment. I was also scared out of my body. It feels like my head has been hollowed out. Clean and nothing left. Complete loss of all thinking and stress responses. Just when my brain loses the ability to think. I was at that moment. I encountered a phenomenon I had never experienced before. I didn't know what that state was at the time. It was unusually quiet at that moment. I didn't think. No thoughts. Although there is no thinking, no thoughts come to my mind. I don't know where I am either. I no longer exist at all. But I have an unusually clear awareness of my surroundings. That is, there is no awareness. But awareness is going on without an observer. But observation is happening. Extraordinarily clear and transparent inside. In addition to losing the ability to think, the whole person. Very sensitive all over. I don't have any anxiety. No worries. No excitement either. I just feel unusually peaceful. The concept of time is gone. I stay there. A moment seems like an eternity. I am like a clear little stream, flowing slowly. The creek reflects the blue sky and white clouds and the beautiful scenery on both sides. Everything is so harmonious. I am so transparent and clear. Keep everything in your heart, no evaluation. Just maintain a keen and all-round awareness. The state is also like an ancient well with calm waves. Stand there quietly. All the people who come to draw water from the well. I can see clearly, but no thought comes to mind. Just reflect and observe. I'm extremely shocked. I know I'm not ready at all. Welcome this new condition of life. It took me almost a month. I just got used to that shock. I got it now. That is completely separated from our body and spirit. Another form of existence. I give this life a new form of existence. Named mind. That is, people are in a state of enlightenment. This is one of my adventures in experiencing the state of enlightenment. That is Zen's favorite way of enlightenment. Instant enlightenment. It can be said that it is the most direct and fastest way to enlightenment. And the simplest way, but before that, we must go through the tribulations of 99 and 81. Experience everything that can be experienced. Think about all the questions you can think about. Then by some chance, you will meet. Since that encounter, I suddenly, I understood almost all Zen cases at once. That's one thing, one thing, everything. It turns out that they all use it to communicate with each other. In a way that can be understood. Outsiders cannot understand the communication at all. It's like we practitioners are all Chinese. And people who are enlightened. They all speak the same Russian language. They are completely two people from different places. Speak each other's language. How can we understand each other? The only way is that you have to be Russian. Then you understand everything. Because when all enlightened people communicate, their language comes from the heart, instead of the brain. A person who lives in the world of the brain. How is it possible to understand? A person who lives in the spiritual world. If you want to have an epiphany, 
You need to be fully prepared now. Chapter 3. I witness my father's enlightenment moment. My father has suffered from senile diabetes for more than 10 years. March last year. Various complications caused by diabetes. Emergency hospitalization. After about three months in the hospital. Transfer to high risk ward. Then a week later. All doctors and all the most advanced medicines invented by mankind today. Nothing can be done anymore. Doctors finally admit there is no cure. The doctor announced that my father would not survive a week. Take him home quickly. Because of his father's tenacious desire to survive. After returning home, use your strong willpower. Lasted for 15 days. Just left this world that he was reluctant to leave. During these 15 days, I'm with you almost 24 hours a day. I remember it very clearly. The fourth night after returning home, my father who was in a coma suddenly woke up miraculously. Look, the time is to 30 p.m. And my father can still speak. Son, why don't you invite people outside to sit inside? I looked up and saw no one outside the window. So I asked who is outside. It's me outside, daddy. I hereby solemnly declare. I have not made anything up. No pretense. Just true and objective. Record the most authentic conversation with my father at that time. I am not materialistic, nor is it idealism. I insist on sharing what I have seen and heard with my own eyes and ears. Something to experience personally. In fact, before this conversation, I already knew for sure. It is true that except for the body and spirit, human beings, there is a third thing besides God. Some call it soul. The human body is just a house. My father's body is already riddled with holes. His soul left his dangerous house. It's also a reasonable thing. This late. What are you doing outside? I'm not afraid at all. I desperately want to be with my father's soul. Have a deep conversation. I plan to travel. Father's language is very clear. It's very ethereal and doesn't seem to come from the body. And the severe pain that tortured my father for many days. It seems to have stopped. Are you going alone? And your grandma? Grandma passed away on August 1st, 2014. Legend has it that a person is about to leave the world. It's probably true that there are relatives coming to pick her up from the underworld. This is another kind of irony. History is often fabricated. And the legend is exactly true. Where are you going? Go to a place far, far away. Then when will you come back? Not coming back. At this time, my father's soul was saying goodbye to me. Dad, do you want to prepare something before you go on a long trip? Clothes, change, etc. I do not need it anymore. For a departing soul, everything in this world is insignificant. But it's better to bring some money with you when traveling far away. I do not need it anymore. Money is like done. Child, my father has always valued money more than life. At this moment, my father actually said that money is like dung. It's a pure understanding. This is a complete relief. Living people. There are some people who can see that money is like dung. There are cases where brothers turn against each other because of money. There are cases where couples go to court. Living person. Far less understanding than those who are about to leave. This is another kind of irony. Aren't you coming back? I continue to ask. Not coming back. Leave MOM behind. Are you relieved? I actually want to ask dad. You still have children and grandchildren. Don't you miss me? That's none of my business anymore. That's your business. I am the eldest son in the family. My father was already in the negative one I see you ward in Hinjiang. I made it clear when I went to visit him. After he left. Mother's life, life, death and burial. I am the only one responsible for it. In addition, I also want to help my sister and brother. Let them live a better life. Such an arrangement for my father. I feel proud. Because I know very well. Only deep in my father's heart. Feel. When his eldest son is able to bear all this. Only then could he make such an arrangement. There is a saying in traditional Chinese culture that the eldest son should be the father. I am powerless and helpless to my father. When I am about to leave this world. Deeply understand the connotation of this sentence. What I ended up doing. I think my father would be proud of me. I took care of my father in March, April, and May. And the five days my father was in the ICU ward. 
all expenses of 10,000 to 20,000 per day. Of course, deep inside me. Anything I spent on my father's behalf. All without regrets. Because sister and brother. Economic conditions will be relatively weak. I never had any idea to say. I hope my sister and brother will share some of the burden. As the eldest son in my family, I am happy to bear it. This is the unshirkable responsibility of a son. After hearing these words from my father, I know very clearly the conversation my father had with me at this time. He is no longer an ordinary father. My father has become enlightened at this moment, although short-lived, but after three months of fighting with death, the spirit that inhabited my father's body awakened. Father's language at this moment, all after the soul awakens, the mind clearly observes its surroundings. Uttered language, father is so calm and collected, changed the manic mood of the past. Father continued to say that you should take good care of your mother. The person I am most sorry for in my life is your mother. This sentence is in accordance with my father's character. It's usually impossible to say it out loud. Because my father is a super chauvinist, been bullying MOM for decades. There was no chance for my mother to express any opinions at all. For the first time, father shows justice to mother. I know that my father was in a state of enlightenment at this time. A few more words need to be said here. Many people have a misunderstanding. Think of qualities such as wisdom, tranquility, calmness, compassion, etc. Is a characteristic of enlightenment. Actually not. Enlightenment itself has no properties. These things such as compassion, love, tranquility, etc. Is it still at the brain level? It's just that once a person becomes enlightened, under the care of enlightenment, our body, our spirits will perform better. I repeatedly emphasize, enlightenment is just awareness and observation in the present moment. Enlightenment is like a mirror. When our bodies come to the mirror, see the dirty face, we naturally wash our faces. When our thoughts come to the mirror, see your own narrow-mindedness. Naturally, you will laugh at yourself. The same enlightenment is that quality inspector. Always check our bodies and our minds. This will make my body and mind show better quality. About half an hour after my conversation with my father, father falls into coma again. Until I leave this world. A person who is about to leave. He is a person who is completely liberated. Because he really knows. There are many things he can no longer hold on to. Before he realized, when he can't grab anything. There must come a time. That moment was his true enlightenment. I said that every person has a chance to become enlightened in his life. It's just a matter of time. So called Master Buddha. It's just that they remain in a state of enlightenment. It takes longer than ordinary people. No one to ask for. Read this passage carefully. A few more words need to be said here. Many people have a misunderstanding. Think of qualities such as wisdom, tranquility, calmness, compassion, etc. Is a characteristic of enlightenment. Actually not. Enlightenment itself has no properties. These things such as compassion, love, tranquility, etc. Is it still at the brain level? It's just that once a person becomes enlightened. Under the care of enlightenment. Our body, our spirit, it will just perform better. I repeatedly emphasize. Enlightenment is just awareness and observation in the present moment. Enlightenment is like a mirror. When our bodies come to the mirror, see the dirty face, we naturally wash our faces. When our thoughts come to the mirror, see your own narrow-mindedness. It's natural to laugh at yourself. Enlightenment is the quality inspector. Always check our bodies and our minds. This will make my body and mind show better quality. This passage is the most important. It is also the core of everything. Can understand this passage. You are not far from enlightenment. Chapter for enlightenment. Just find the third one where I am. Enlightenment. It has always been regarded as the highest achievement by countless practitioners and endows enlightenment with countless miraculous properties. As if a person is enlightened, you can see the six paths with your eyes. Listen to all directions. You can watch it for a thousand years. Look down for a thousand years. Actually not. Enlightenment actually means nothing. The ultimate result of enlightenment. 
just looking for that transparent person who has been following us. Just an invisible person. Human beings have always been composed of three of me. Brain me and mind me. My body is easy to find. Because it can be seen and touched. Is this person handsome? Are you in good shape? Is your body in good health? You can tell at a glance. Therefore most poets. I spend all my time feeding my body. Eating, drinking and having sex has become their main pursuit in life. The brain is also easy for me to perceive. We learn. We discuss. We think. We debate. We are happy. We are angry. They are all easily perceived. That thought arises in my mind. It's easy for us to catch. Therefore, a part of the brain suddenly does something ridiculous. The brain has no time to react. Caught of guard. The brain will also freeze at this time. Same effect as the first game. Let's look at the Zen cases. Zen Master Marza learned from Zen Master Huireng. Sitting Zen every day and very hard working. Once, Zen Master Huireng asked Marzu why he sat in meditation. Marzu said that in order to become a Buddha, Huireng took a brick and started grinding it. Marzu felt strange. Asked him what he does for grinding bricks. Huireng said that he could be turned into a mirror. Marzu was very confused. How can you polish a brick into a mirror? Huireng answered that the polished brick does not make a mirror. How can one become a Buddha by sitting in meditation? Look, this is the master creating a ridiculous situation. Let the apprentice see completely illogical places. This gives the apprentice a chance to give up his brain. Even if it's just a second, become a Buddha. Enlightenment or not, it's not about doing. Depends on whether you can give up. The brain has no attachment, no worries. It's not about whether the posture is good or not. How long did it take? Do still a girt. This is irrelevant. If you meditate constantly like Marzu, Marzu may not become Marzu. Can't enlighten me either. Once he understands that bricks can't make a mirror, you can't become a Buddha even by meditating. I let go of my attachment to meditation. The third one is difficult for me to describe directly. But it's not impossible to describe. Metaphors, symbols, analogies, storytelling, etc. All are very good methods. Once I find the third me, in fact, it will be very disappointing. If you had high expectations before, we'll definitely be disappointed. The third one is transparent, colorless and odorless, invisible and shadowless. No special features. The third one is that I am just an indifferent person at the moment. Observation without observation. Because the third time I wake up, like a strict quality inspector, watch carefully every word that comes out of your mouth. Every thought that passes through my mind. Thus giving us words to speak out. It's just a different quality than the thoughts that appear in the mind. That is the third time I wake up. Objectively, it can make the first me, the material self. The second time I was energetic, I performed better. The difficulty here is that. The third one is that I don't make any suggestions for correction. He is just a beam of light. 360 degree illumination of misunderstandings and narrow thinking, so that the thinking can make adjustments on its own. The third me, just a spotless mirror. He is very quiet. Just react and observe at the moment. Chapter 5. Donate 1 million. Also say thank you. Here is a very interesting story. But you may not understand, there is a wise master. Because it is famous far and wide. There was an endless stream of believers who came to listen to his sermons. Soon the master's dojo became very crowded. So the master planned to build a larger dojo. The master has no money at all, because the master does not put time and energy into making money. His trails are free. He lives in wisdom. There was a very wealthy businessman who knew about this. So I decided to donate one million. Come and help the master build a new house. Rich businessman holds one million in cash, ready to hand over to the master. The master said yes. You put down the rich businessman and gave the money to the master. But he was very dissatisfied with the master's attitude. Because he gave a large amount of money. A whole million. Now, a person's annual living expenses only need 10,000 yuans. And the master didn't even thank him. There's one million in that bag. The wealthy businessman reminded that before this, you already told me. The master said that even if I am a rich businessman, 
One million is considered a lot of money. The wealthy businessman continued. Do you want me to thank you for this? The master said it was out of politeness. You should thank. The rich businessman said why should I thank you? The master said the opposite. You should thank me. The house is very angry. I think the master is too weird. It's simply unreasonable. At the same time, he felt that he was taken advantage of. I am stupid and naive. What is the logic? Donors should thank those who receive donations. This is absolutely ridiculous. Most people don't understand this story. Now it's right. People living at the level of the brain. I will never understand the meaning of this story. Because the brain is cunning, is calculating. The brain understands logical things. But if something doesn't make sense, the brain immediately short circuits like an idiot. Because from any point of view, it is impossible for a wealthy businessman to donate one million to thank someone who receives a donation. This is completely illogical. Contemporary society. It's a bad era full of deals, calculations, and plunder. Our brains have been trained to be incredibly smart. We do anything. They will all make careful calculations in their brains. Calculate the cost effectiveness of doing something. Charity events become shows and business venues. Love funds have become a fig leaf for tax evasion. The right to beauty becomes a cheap bargaining chip in the transaction. What else is not a transaction? In this era where transactions are everywhere, almost all relationships have changed. Why godfather and godmother? What brothers or fellow countrymen? Everything revolves around interest. These are all traces of the brain. The wealthy businessman in the story has been scheming. How much reputation can you gain with an investment of one million? What a lofty image you can create for yourself. But the master didn't even say thank you. This is so rude. This is for wealthy businessmen. To a shrewd mind, it's simply unreasonable. But the master is completely separated from the brain. He lives in the spiritual world. He has no plans. He had no expectations. There are no deals in his world. All his sermons are free. He only has a compassionate heart to save the world and take away people. He hopes to get a bigger dojo. He simply hopes that more people will be inspired. Be redeemed. He doesn't need anything in return. He every moment. We are all grateful to those guests who have come from afar. He thanked them for their trust in him. He thanked them for their pursuit of truth. And respect for truth. The master lives in a world overflowing with. His mind is so clear. Therefore his wisdom is so rich. He needs to keep sharing and giving. He had to share. He had to give. The more you share. The more you give. His mind becomes clearer and more transparent. He is like a bottomless ancient well. If no one keeps pumping away the well water, brand new well water cannot flow in. As more and more people come to draw water from his ancient well, his well water will be cooler and cleaner. He will be more energetic. He will live in life every moment. Therefore, we need to thank those who come to collect water constantly. The master keeps giving. But I am grateful all the time. Thank you to those who came to be baptized. Thanks to those who believed in him and stayed with him. Because of their existence. His life is so overflowing. His life is so vivid. The master is always there. Thank you to those who came to receive sermons. So the master said you should thank me. Apparently the wealthy businessman did not understand what the master meant. A person in the brain world and a person in the heart world. Stand together. Can't talk at all. Because... The brain and the mind are completely different worlds. The brain is demanding. The mind reflects on the aspect of devotion. The brain is calculating. The mind reflects on the sharing aspect. The brain is smart. The mind reflects on the innocent side. The brain is complex. The mind sees the simple side. The brain is cloudy. The mind is clear. When the master says you should thank me, the master is standing from his own point of view. I say this from a spiritual perspective, so he doesn't need to say thank you to the wealthy businessman. On the contrary, the wealthy businessman needs to say thank you to the master. Yes, rich businessmen do need to thank the master. Because of the master, his one million built a bigger dojo. More people will benefit from master. Complete the transmission of Fushang's merits. In this matter, the master is just a medium. The master is just a bridge. 
the rich businessman passes through the master, completed his dedication of supreme merit, and because the master took over. In this way, the real flow of the life of a wealthy businessman is completed. The wealthy businessman is no longer a miser. His life also began to flow. And flow is precisely the true meaning of life. Therefore, the giver should be grateful. Thank you to those who receive gifts. Once when the lady was sorting out her clothes, found a lot of old clothes. Regardless of the quality, style, workmanship, etc. They are all good. But the wardrobe can no longer hold so much. Men need to know. Women's wardrobes always look too small. Madam's clothes have filled the entire wardrobe. Need to clean up. But what to do with all those old clothes that are pretty good? Madam has been struggling with this matter. Give it to someone else. Feel embarrassed. After all, it's the clothes I wore. But throw it away. I feel very sorry in my heart. Women are such animals. There is always one missing in the wardrobe. Piece of clothing. But I never want to throw away old clothes. Worry about hurting others when giving it to others. So very confused. Soon two relatives came to my hometown. In the middle of chatting, Madam takes out his collection. He probed carefully. Take out some clothes for them to try on. Turns out they liked it very much. The lady took the opportunity to give it to them. They are happy. Madam is even more happy. Glad they like it. Glad they accept it. Rich people are filled with gratitude. I'm grateful that they didn't dislike it. Be grateful that they can accept it happily. Thank them for completing the transfer and flow of life. Therefore, the giver should be grateful. The recipient is the real angel. But once a gift contains some expectation. At the same time, when giving, always expecting something in return. Such giving will be worthless. Giving like this is an insult, is a blasphemy. It's unforgivable. Giving must be selfless. Asking for nothing. Must be grateful. Otherwise, put away our hypocritical face. Be a smart-minded person again. Most people don't understand this story. Now it's right. People living at the level of the brain. I will never understand the meaning of this story. Because the brain is cunning, is calculating. The brain understands logical things. But if something doesn't make sense, the brain immediately short circuits like an idiot. Because from any point of view, it is impossible for a wealthy businessman to donate one million to thank someone who receives a donation. This is completely illogical. Chapter 6 The Achilles Heel of the Brain Around the years when I was 28 to 30, particularly fascinated by monoculture, it's a pity that I can't understand it at all. So I have to make progress. I simply don't believe there are books that I can't understand. If you don't understand this one, change it to another one. What this master wrote is incomprehensible. Just change it to another master, back and forth. I have read about 300 books in total. Books about Zen culture. The result is that the more I look at it, the more confused I become. The more I look, the less I understand. Just give me a Zen case. Saima Tutu found a Feng Shui treasure in Taiwei Mountain. He wanted to find someone with moral integrity to open a dojo. So he came to Zen Master Beijing to select talents. Wait for everyone to gather. Saima escapes. He held up a clean bottle and said it was not a clean bottle. Who can tell what this is? The people present were at a loss. Don't know the answer. At this time, a dirty bastard monk squeezed in from behind. Said can I try it? Yes, Saima Tutura said. The miscellaneous monk took the purification bottle and put it on the ground. He suddenly flew up and kicked the bottle out of the wall. Saima Tutura laughed. He said that this is the real owner of Taiwei Mountain. Please tell me. The strange actions of Saima Tutua and the monk. What information are you sending to the other party? What mystery is hidden in it? If you see this case, see the question above. So I kept thinking about it in my brain to find the answer. Then you are fooled at the brain level. You will never find the answer. Just like when I was in trouble. For master level conversations, or strange behavior among masters. Always trying to find answers at the brain level. It's like asking for fish by chance. The harder you work, the more frustrated you become. Because the answer is not in my head. The riddle is the answer at the spiritual level. If you can't jump to the spiritual level, 
you will never understand the above case in your lifetime. For the brain, you can learn logical analysis techniques and methods, etc. There is no problem with these. But for illogical language and behavior, the brain will go crazy. The mind is just the opposite. The mind has no logic. The mind is a leap. It's a realization. An illogical case begins. Cyber Tutu. It raises an illogical question. This is not a no stop. What's this? An illogical question. How the brain analyzes. How to give an answer. But Cyber Tutu is an accomplished master. There is no doubt about this. He is from a spiritual level. Raising this question from its essence. He is a master. But he needs to use this illogical question. Come and screen the hundreds of disciples in front of you. Which one has completed the jump? The vast majority remain silent. It shows that most of them are still at the brain level. That leap, that qualitative change has not happened yet. They are still determined to find a reasonable answer. They're still at the brain level. They still have no depth. They haven't changed yet. A dirty rag monk walked out from the background. On the path of spiritual practice, it always seems like this. The more ordinary people, the easier it is to make the jump. An inconspicuous chore monk, his inner self has broken through. That qualitative change, it's already happening within him. He knew that Sima Tutu's question was ridiculous. Even stupid, there is no answer at all. Since there is no answer, why waste your breath? So he kicked a concubine jing away with one kick. It directly shatters all the attachments in the brain. When most of the disciples at that moment, there was definitely a moment, this moment. The brain cannot think for a moment. If for some of the disciples who are ready, this moment is priceless, just this moment. A brief moment when the brain short circuits. Those disciples who are ready, you can totally take advantage of this moment. To the spiritual world, to one's own core essence. There was an electric glimpse for Sima Tutua and the miscellaneous monks. Absolutely not. The problem is that they have achieved spiritual communication. They understand each other. Communication between masters is like this. Seems absurd. In fact, they are close to each other. Questions from the spiritual level must be solved by non-logical means. A master who doesn't follow logic, he needs to see. A master disciple who also plays cards illogically. That question is a conspiracy, a temptation. If you play your cards logically, that proves that you haven't changed drastically yet. You are still thinking about the answer at the brain level. You are not the person he is looking for. Questions from the spiritual level must be solved by non-logical means. A master who doesn't follow logic, he needs to see. A height that is also illogical. Chapter 7 How to Observe a Cup One afternoon depends on your depth. Drinking tea with some old friends. There is a blue and white flag teacup in front of me. So-called old friend. They're just some of the older brothers in the community. After they retire. In my spare time, I love to come to my office and have a few drinks. And every time I come, they all like to bring basic Chinese studies with them. Or Buddhist classics. Discuss with me. No matter how many academic giants they bring with them. Or bring some classic Buddhist scriptures with you. No matter how old they are, in my opinion, they basically don't even get started. Because a wise person, a person who is influenced by Chinese Buddhism, every move, every word, every deed, will show distinctive clues, a man of real depth. It's impossible to hide it. It has nothing to do with their age or the book in their hands. Besides, Buddhist classics are not meant to be read at all. Reading Buddhist scriptures is complete nonsense. All Buddhist scriptures are an experience. Science requires experience, enlightenment and sublimation. It takes enlightenment to feel it. The more you rely on your brain, the farther away from the Buddhist scriptures. Buddhism does not come from the brain, but from the spiritual level. Use your brain to read the wisdom of the soul. This itself is a joke. Sinophilia one often changes husbands. Everyone has their own opinions. But one person commented most profoundly. It's Atich and Daeming. He said something. Every man failure Wong has experienced in the past. At most it stays at the spiritual level. None reaches the spiritual level. But Fei Wong is already a spiritual person. So the inner desire, forcing her to keep searching. 
the man who can match her. Needless to say, Chun Daeming is definitely a profound man, because there is only one person like Lao Tzu. Only then can you understand Lao Tzu. Two big brothers started recommending Chinese classics and Buddhism to me, and keep reciting the classic sentences. I nodded politely. I see some kind of cuteness. I also saw a certain vanity to calm them down. I asked the two brothers jokingly. Take a closer look at the teacups in front of you. What did you see? One said the teacup was good. The pattern is very unique. Fine workmanship. Belongs to the first class teacup. Another said that this teacup is full of color. Exquisite materials. Used to make tea with pure taste. Is there anything else? He'll continue to ask. Although the two eldest brothers continue to add some, but basically it stays at the upper level. A teacup. People with different depths come to observe. The observed results will be very different. Let's talk about patterns first. The pattern of a fine teacup. It must be someone who has passed the master level. Carefully drawn, produced by master, must be a fine product. The master is in the process of painting patterns. Not only is the concentration, and will fully invest his emotions and soul. A master, he will never allow his work to be shoddy. Like an excellent singer, not only can singing not be out of tune. The most important thing is, the songs must be full of emotion and understanding of life. The listener will feel sad. A pattern full of the master's hard work and emotion, although quietly engraved on the cup. Don't have a keen heart. You can't feel it no matter what. Let's talk about the process of making the cup. A small tea cup, if it is purely handmade. It must be carefully polished by skilled craftsmen, made by repeatedly firing. Everybody knows, the teacup firing process cannot be completed in one go. Requires repeated firing. In the process of firing, you need to be careful every moment, like looking after a swaddled baby. No carelessness. From this aspect, a teacup incorporates the spirit of more capable people. Finally, let's talk about the materials used to make this cup. A good teacup. The selection of materials is very sophisticated. Need to carefully select from heaven and earth, then stir and knead repeatedly. No one knows. This material drawn from heaven and earth. How many years has it been there? Maybe the same age as the earth. There is no doubt that this piece of material, it must carry the aura of the sun, moon, and stars, the rise and fall of human history. This is the truth. The moment the truth is spoken. Almost everyone will feel it immediately. So I say, the teacup in front of me is a living elf. The two big brothers finally calm down. People on Earth are divided into different levels. People who have never explored the depths. There can be no depth. Some people live a lifetime, live very superficially, like looking at a cup. No matter how you look, you can only see the external appearance. People who live on the material plane, the most miserable life is toil. People who live on a spiritual level, the most confusing thing in my life. Only those who ascend to the spiritual level, only then can we find the true meaning of life. Serenity, tranquility, calmness, contentment, and joy. Chapter Eight: How to Install the Brain. Universe. A university professor went to consult an eminent monk. What is Tao? The eminent monk did not answer directly. Just take the professor to the garden behind the house. When the professor asked the eminent monk again, "What is Tao?" the ten eminent monks immediately interrupted the professor's question. "Stop talking and enjoy the fragrance of the flowers here." "Do you smell the flowers?" the professor took a deep breath, then said, "It smells good, master. This is the way. We have more to say about the Tao." The professor stays there, more confused than before. "That's how it is." A professor with a head full of knowledge. Go ask the eminent monk for advice. He attempts to gain some conceptual knowledge, but this has nothing to do with Tao. People with more knowledge, the further away from the road, the smarter the mind, the more knowledgeable the person, the further away from the road. The professor is a person who lives entirely on the cerebral level. The eminent monk lives in another world, spiritual world. People from two different worlds. It's actually difficult to have a conversation. It's a state of mindlessness. It's an experience, a kind of current affairs. There is no time. 
No sense of existence without the concept of space is a moment, then a momentary state of being. How the brain understands. The brain cannot understand this state. The brain needs a concept, need a definition, need a memory, leave concept, leave memory. The brain goes crazy. The Tao and the brain are incompatible enemies. Tao is indescribable, can only inspire, can only mean. But what kind of people can be inspired? What kind of person can be lit up? Only those who abandon their brains completely can be inspired. To be lit, the difficulty is that we have never tried. A life completely devoid of thinking activity. No thoughts in mind. State of not making any effort. We have become accustomed to relying on our brains. No brain. We don't even know what to do next. We don't know where to go. Because we are used to being slaves to our brains. Every action we take. Every word said. All have to be processed by the brain. Otherwise, where are we going? How should we express? Give up the brain completely. Almost unimaginable. However, whether the Tao exists or not, it's okay to calm me down. Good for the soul. It's exactly the state of not having a brain. Such a simple thing. Because of brain interference. Become extremely complex and difficult. It seems that no one can exist completely without the brain. Let's still see a very beautiful story. One day Aristotle was walking on the beach. He saw a man scooping out seawater with a spoon. Scooped into a hole he had dug beside the seawall. Aristotle had his own problems to worry about. While he was thinking, walking along the seaside, he walked towards the weirdo step by step. That strange man is always very attentive. This aroused great curiosity in Aristotle. What is he doing? He couldn't control his curiosity. But that weirdo is still so focused. Didn't notice his arrival at all. The weirdo lured him to the beach. Scoop a tablespoon full of sea water. Then take the sea water to the embankment. Pour him into the hole. Then walk to the beach. Such a tireless round trip. Finally, Aristotle had to say, wait a minute. This old gentleman, I don't want to disturb you. But what are you doing? It really confuses me that you're doing this. That weirdo said, didn't you see it? I am planning on using all the water in the ocean. To fill the hole in that sea wall. Learning from the rich and famous. Talented. Aristotle couldn't bear it. Finally laughed out loud. He said you are such a fool. How is this possible? Have you not seen how vast the entire ocean is? And your hole is so small. You actually figured it out. You need to use a spoon. Bite the entire ocean into this hole. You are crazy. You're just wasting your life like this. You are a madman. Go home and rest quickly. Something happened that drove Aristotle crazy. That weirdo laughed louder than Aristotle. He also said you were right. I am going home. Because my work is done. What did Aristotle mean by that? You have done your job. Weird people talk about respected great philosophers. Did you know? You've been doing the same stupid things as me. Even stupider than me. Look at your head now. Look at your brain. My SNT is whole much smaller than mine. I am so stupid. I want to fit the whole ocean into my little hole. And you wise great philosopher. Look at the whole universe. Entire existence. Is he wider than the ocean? And you actually tried to install them in your brain. That weirdo laughed heartily. And the more he laughs, the louder he gets. And that philosopher. That Aristotle was already stupid. Completely forgot. The question that my brain was still thinking about just now. In front of a real person. Learned philosophers have always been a joke. How the brain can fit the entire universe. Because this question seems to philosophers. It's just nonsense. Absurd. It's just a waste of time thinking about this issue. Philosopher. Always a paranoid in a narrow field. But they really like to pretend to know everything. This would be very troublesome. How the brain holds the entire universe. Within the scope of philosophy. Philosophers will be tortured to death by this question. But change the angle. The answer is so simple. It's like there once was a wandering monk. Praise in front of everyone. He said within three days, I am capable. Let the mountain in front of the village come to me. Three days later, miracle did not happen. And this wandering monk walked directly to the mountain. Say it loudly since the mountain cannot be overcome. Then I'll go there. 
are the mountains still right in front of me? The mind is flexible. The brain is stiff. The mind's choices are limitless. The brain's choices are very limited. The brain's choices can never exceed the brain's storage. How the brain holds the entire universe. We need to change the model. Look at the problem from another angle. Like another question. What is the fastest way for us to reach the moon? The answer is to close your eyes. One move and one move. Arrive immediately. Faster than light. Close eyes. The brain can hold the entire universe in an instant. Chapter 9 Enlightenment is always in desperate situations. For 10,000 people there are 10,000 paths to enlightenment. Enlightenment is like the center of a circle. Start from any point in all directions. Just start moving towards the dot. Anyone can reach this point. The person who can finally reach this starting point. Undoubtedly, they are the top masters in their fields. A Mei Yu Wang can become an enlightened person. When he is three feet above the ground, will drip accurately into the ground, in a bottle with a small opening, and not a drop leaks. At that moment, he was an enlightened person. No one is standing on the edge of the cliff, and half of the feet are hanging in the air. When he accurately shoots a copper coin 100 meters away, at that moment, he was an enlightened person. Enlightenment is open to anyone. He is there. As long as you open your legs and start towards him, you can reach. Arrive at the origin from the starting point. Every step is a practice. Let's watch a story. There once was a doctor who was very skilled in medicine. Often get sick at your fingertips. But despite this, there are still many patients who are terminally ill. Powerless. Therefore, when this doctor faces patients every day, there is a fear of death in my heart. Once the doctor went out to see patients again, on the way he met a wandering monk, doctor. So I asked the Tao Master to tell me what enlightenment is. The wandering monk replied, Arms giver. I'm really sorry. My current practice. I still can tell you what enlightenment is. But one thing is certain. Once you become enlightened, you don't have to worry about anything. If you really want answers, just find a master. He will give you the answer. So under the instructions of the wandering monk, the doctor went to visit Zen Master Nanyin. After the doctor found Zen Master Nanyin, get straight to the point, explain your intention, and request a start. Zen Master Nanyin said enlightenment is very simple. Since you are a doctor, you should treat your patients well. That's your enlightenment. The doctor seems to understand, but not understand. He visited Zen Master Nanyin three times. Zen Master Nanyin always told him that a doctor, you shouldn't waste time in the temple every day. Go home and take care of your patients. Healing illnesses and saving lives is your ultimate enlightenment. The doctor was very puzzled. He was confused. I thought how could this kind of beginning get rid of the fear of death? So when he was interviewed for the fourth time, I complained that a wandering monk told me, Once a person becomes enlightened, there won't be any worries, and every time here, you always ask me to take care of my patients. Is this what is called enlightenment? You have been here for few years. Do you feel there are any changes? Zen Master Nanyin said. I am still worried about the patient in front of me. Although I will try my best to treat you every time. But that worry is always in vain. Law eliminates doctor says. At this time, a dot happened to pass by Zen Master Nanyin's Zen room. The Zen Master then asked. Do you think a dog will be worried? The doctor paused, feel a little insulted. But he still answered, rationally, no. Master Zen Master continued to ask questions. Very good. You can stop coming here again. Dork is your best teacher. The doctor was confused. But the Zen Master has closed his eyes. No more talking. The doctor continues to practice. Conscientious. But I never forget to learn from dogs how not to worry. Until death. He finally understood the Zen Master's antics. Why aren't dogs worried? Very simple. Because dogs live in ignorance all their lives. Of course not worried. How can people live in ignorance and no reality? So there is no need to worry. How to understand? Zen Master Nan Yin told the doctor on the one hand. Go help your patients. You can feel at ease. On the one hand, doctors are warned to learn from dogs. You can feel at ease. It is impossible to be ignorant when helping patients. This is so inconsistent. 
No wonder doctors need a lifetime to understand. Realize this, need a jump, an inclusive, rather than using an idle or thinking. Who says contradictions cannot coexist? Who says devils and angels can't coexist? An inclusive, let both exist together. Let ignorance and knowledge exist at the same time. Make it happen. You can see that enlightenment is actually right in front of you. I once said, the best masters in any field are enlightened. Look, singer Yunfei sang Father's Grassland on the Avenue of Stars for the first time. Mothers and, so emotional, so touching. The song made many judges cry in the audience. How many viewers were moved in front of the TV? At that moment, Yun Fai was an enlightened person. Yun Fai is no longer here. There is only his song in the air. Yun Fai and this song become one. This is ignorance. At the same time, it is impossible for Yun Fai to not be here. He was at that moment. Just converting his life into his emotions. His thoughts. His feelings were completely integrated into the singing. This is knowledge, without any exaggeration. The best work in any industry. They are all created in this state. I often say something. A truly beautiful woman. You don't know that you are beautiful. A really handsome man. I didn't know he was handsome either. This is very interesting. Requires good understanding. The brilliant doctor in this article. It wasn't until his death that he realized the beginning of Zen Master. Because he was the only one who reached that point. That is the origin mentioned at the beginning of this article. Only then can he understand. When he is treating his patients wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly means giving completely. Means forgetting to eat and sleep. And at the same time, he completely forgot what he had done. He does not have the concept of treating patients well. From intentional to unintentional. From self to no self, from sound to silence. He was freed from the worries of life and death. He also completed his lifelong practice. Chapter 10 The Brain is Immortal Perseverance in Spirit, Mentally Ill What a terrible term. However, this has been for centuries. The most ignorant definition of human beings. There is actually no mental illness in this world. What we define as so-called psychopaths. It's just their thoughts and emotions. Trapped in a narrow space. I just can't get out for the time being. They are just temporary obsessions. They are just a group of people temporarily trapped in the brain world. A person in a narrow corner. Ironically, at present, most psychiatrists. They are also people who live at the level of the brain. They themselves. He is also an out and out psychopath. It's just that the brain space they live in is slightly, slightly more spacious. In this sense, every one of us living at the level of the brain. All are mentally ill to some degree. The only difference is the size of the space. For example, the ones we call psychopaths. They may live in the basement. A cage with only three square meters in size. A psychiatrist may live in a three-bedroom apartment. The average person lives in a house with two bedrooms and one living room. All the difference is the size of that space. But the level is the same. Everyone is at the mental level and the brain level. When we laugh at so-called psychopaths, Little do we know that we are just taking 50 steps and laughing at a hundred steps. This article explores what is the brain world. What is the spiritual world? I will personally take you to the spiritual world. Because I've been to the place. The brain world is a knowing. A kind of accumulation. A memory. Everything in the world of the brain is old. The brain of the past was a storehouse of knowledge. It is a department store with life experience. The spiritual world is a kind of trust, a flow, an insight. The spiritual world has no past, no future, only now. Everything is lively, lively and smart at the moment. Mind world and brain world are two completely different worlds. What the brain is best at is analyzing, summarizing and summarizing. And then try to understand. The brain is best at logic and thinking. And the mind is a present reaction. A light is a beam of light. All activities in the brain world. All under the light of the soul. Transparent side body. The mind doesn't follow any logic. There is no logic. Mind and brain are two completely opposite worlds. The world of the brain is chaotic. The tangle is contradictory. It's impossible for the brain not to be confused. 
because there are never two identical ones in this world. Different brains have different knowledge, different experiences, different culture, different traditions, different customs. The earth is full of different brains, stubborn brains everywhere. So, the battle between brains never stops, and the spiritual world is clear, simply flowing. The mind never remembers, because the soul does not need memory. The mind is the reaction of the moment. It's a spotless mirror. It's a clear and transparent light. The mind never accumulates anything. The mind is an immediate response. It is a kind of present care that takes care of things as they come and pass by. The mind just reacts. Immediate response. The spiritual world is one moment after another. Live completely in the moment. It does not belong to the past, nor does it belong to the future. It only belongs to the present. So the spiritual world is relaxed, because there is no burden, no rubbish. This, for those who have never experienced this, for those who have never stepped through the door of the soul, this state is so unfamiliar, almost hard to understand. Can't even understand. But the soul is there, whether you understand it or not. He is there. He only belongs to those who jump into his arms. Spiritual world. Belongs to a relatively advanced world in the process of human evolution. For most people, they don't know at all. There is also the existence of the spiritual world. For most sentient beings, there will be great difficulties if you don't even know that there is a spiritual world. So how do you explore your soul? How do you grow your soul? Because you don't understand something, you don't even know that something exists. How do you develop it? How to develop it? It's difficult. Trying to use the brain to analyze the mind, to understand the mind. That's in vain. It's impossible for the brain to understand the mind. How do two people from different periods communicate? And the key here, it is precisely the brain that must stop all thinking, stop all analysis, stop all efforts to understand. The brain must be completely quiet. After completely dying, only then will the spiritual world appear. It's hard for the brain to accept this. Most people spend their entire lives, nor could we see the emergence of the spiritual world. The fundamental reason is here. The brain works too hard. Thought that through brain thinking and analysis, you can enter the spiritual world. You can understand the spiritual world. This is seeking fish at the edge of the wood. Wrong direction. The harder you work, the farther away you are from your goal. Enter the spiritual world. What is needed is just not to work hard. Enter the spiritual world without any fuss. All efforts of the brain must be abandoned. The brain must rest completely. Complete silence. Can't have a thought, because the mind is the world without the brain. This is an almost despairing thing. But for those who have been to the spiritual world, but it's easy. Right now, you can enter the spiritual world immediately. I've seen too many empty eyes. The desperate Taoist monk, and those monks who claim to be very spiritual, they actually achieve nothing. They stay in the world of the brain. No progress. They're stuck in the brain. That breakthrough didn't happen. That sharp change didn't happen. They are trapped. Can't find the direction. They keep trying. The result is getting further and further away. Chapter Eleven: The brain is immortal. The spirit remains unremitting until my father dies. The elders in the family asked a monk to recite sutras for my father's salvation. The monk is here. He ran away when he saw me, because I saw through them in an instant. They are fake monks that jump on them. No voice at all. So I chanted sutras for my father myself. I recite the landing sutra for my father. What is landing? I just need to deal with everything that my father was worried about during his lifetime, and he did better than what his father asked him to do. The mind and the brain are born to be enemies. They are at odds with each other. So, like an island in the ocean, hidden in the water, only the sea water recedes. The island will appear. Sea water is the brain. The island is the soul. Can see the sea water. The island is submerged. Island exposed. Sea water must be pushed out. One disappears. Another one will appear. They can't appear at the same time. The brain is always a distraction. The harder the brain works, just like the sea water rises higher and higher, the soul is hidden deeper. I've walked this road, 
so I am very familiar with this sea. I know that, under a certain sea, there is indeed a mysterious island. Let's read a story to help Lin Hui. There is a little novice monk. I have been practicing with a master for several years. He always had a suspicion. Doubt the existence of the spiritual world. Because almost all spiritual practices, they are all cultivated for the spiritual world. So one day, he finally got up the courage to ask his master. I've always had a suspicion. I don't believe in the existence of a spiritual world. This is why I haven't made any progress in the past few years. Because I doubt. Is there such a thing called the spiritual world? It's normal for little novice monks to have problems. It's normal to doubt the existence of the spiritual world. After all, this so-called spiritual world cannot be seen. Can't touch it so. The little novice monk has always been confused. Because of this, he has never had any breakthroughs. Cultivation is definitely a revolution of faith. No faith, no absolute trust. It is impossible to have breakthroughs or sharp changes. Like an oak seed, if you don't believe it, you can grow into a towering tree by yourself. It will always be nothing more than a seed. Only complete trust. Then throw yourself into the embrace of the earth regardless of your own safety. This is the only way to hug. Sharp changes will happen. Miracles will happen. This oak seed, it can grow into a big tree after all. The original seed must die. New life will begin. This is the dilemma. Seeds are never seen. The one who becomes an oak tree himself. Because before this, the seed must die. If before the sharp change, I can't see it at all. The state after one sudden transformation. How to act bravely. So in addition to trust, there is no second way. The same goes for rising to the spiritual level. Rise to the spiritual level, the brain must die. Completely dead. Otherwise, we will never see you. Unable to experience the infinite beauty of the spiritual world. The little novice monk has always stayed at the brain level. His brain is working all the time. He is doubting. Doubt is the hallmark of the brain. The master did not speak. Take the little novice to a very dark room. Tell the little novice that there is a stone in the corner of the room. The little novice doesn't believe it. He said to master, the house is so dark. I can't see. I don't believe there's a stone in the corner. The master lights a candle. The room immediately became brighter. There is a big stone placed in the east corner of the room. Many things don't exist just because you don't believe them. I believe it is the trajectory of the brain. Need a lot of evidence, many witnesses. Only the brain wants to believe it. And the heart is trust. Trust is absolute acceptance. Trust is a leap, a jump. No evidence is needed in the middle. Transition with witnesses is directly integrated into. This is how we ascend to the spiritual world. Huge difficulties faced. We have been accustomed to letting our brains dominate us. We have been ruled by the brain for a long time. We have become slaves to our brains. We rely too much on our brains. If the brain does not issue instructions, we simply won't take any action. Chapter 12, the brain is not dead. The mind is not present. How can we turn over and become the masters of our brains? It's too difficult. Try to stand up and be the master. This is a great subversion. This is not a disruption that everyone can achieve. We must clearly understand. The brain itself is a distraction, an obstacle. Only by bypassing the brain can we enter the spiritual world. Kill the brain. Let the brain die. Shock the brain. Make your brain stop everything. The soul appears immediately. It's that simple. All the masters who have been to the spiritual world. There is a very simple way. Help latecomers kill their brains. That's man-made chaos. Create absurdity. Create a completely illogical opportunity. Let the brains of latecomers short circuit at a certain moment. Once the brain encounters something that it cannot think about. Once you encounter something illogical. The brain will short circuit. The brain goes into shock. In the moment of brain short circuit and shock, the mind will appear. In this way we can understand the spiritual world. Have a brief prejudice. Just like a master lights a candle. The moment the candle is lit, the stone in the corner immediately appeared. The moment when the brain short circuits, the soul will appear immediately. Although very short-lived, but there is a bias. This way at least we have a moment. 
The real and perceived mind does exist. Let's look at another story. There was an apprentice who followed his master for many years. The apprentice works very hard, but it's no use. There has been no fundamental change. One day there is no moon in the sky. There are no stars either. He went to the master's meditation room again with many questions. Because he has been working hard at the brain level. So there are many questions. There is never any problem at the spiritual level. This is a very obvious sign. Everything is clear at the spiritual level. Transparent, everything is very peaceful and quiet. There will be no problems with the mind. Only the brain has problems, and a lot. The little monk went to the master with many questions. The master is sitting quietly, so peaceful. So peaceful, the apprentice is here. The master spoke, it's so dark outside. Come in, it's so dark outside. It's a metaphor, is a pun. There is no moon in the sky. There are no stars either. Of course, it's dark. At the same time, he was hinting to his apprentice. You live in darkness. The apprentice is always in the dark. Always struggling in anonymity. Master knows very well. A person who lives on a spiritual level. Master can tell at a glance. The apprentice walks in. He didn't dare to disturb the master. Sit quietly next to. A long time. The apprentice can't sit still. The night is already very deep. He doesn't want to disturb the master. He got up to leave. The master once again said it was dark outside. Let me light a lamp for you. So the master lit the lamp. The apprentice just took over the lamp. The master suddenly blew out the lamp. The master blows out the lights. Came so suddenly. It's so unreasonable. This is ridiculous. That moment. The apprentice's brain will definitely short circuit. This is not logical. This is incredible. The apprentice cannot think, since it's so dark. It is logical for the master to light a lamp for himself. But after lighting the lamp, it was immediately blown out. This is not logical. My brain can't bear this ridiculous behavior. The brain cannot think. This is completely illogical behavior. So the brain short-circuited. At the moment when the apprentice's mind went blank, he saw another world, this world. It's the spiritual world he has always dreamed of. Just one prejudice is enough. Because he has been looking for. Now what he's looking for is right in front of him. All doubts in his heart disappeared. He had an epiphany. The teacher's painstaking efforts. At that moment. The land has been sublimated. That sharp change. That jump happened. He suddenly burst into tears. Grateful. Create confusion. Creating absurdity has always been a common method used by masters. If you understand. You can understand it immediately. Countless seemingly absurd Zen case. Almost all masters use similar techniques. Whether it's beating, shouting, drinking or spitting. This is just a formal difference. The purpose is the same. Short circuit your dumb brain. Even if only for a moment. I have also worked hard all the way here. I also encountered a head and warning from my master. Deputy Chief, this guy is a legend to me. I will mention him again when I have the opportunity. Because I have been preparing hard for three to five years. That roar came at the right time. It was the roar from the master. Directly unfold the spiritual world in front of me. I jumped directly into the spiritual world. I was so excited that I didn't sleep for three days. I am shaking like a madman, burst into tears. I can responsibly say from my most direct experience. Please do not doubt the existence of the spiritual world. If there is any doubt, that is when the brain enters a state of interference. Once the brain intervenes, all efforts are wasted. The spiritual world will never be seen. Because I walk this road, so I am clear. Starting from our body, we will come to our spiritual world. There's no problem with this. Most people in their lifetime, everyone can come to this world. And the spiritual world is already very crowded at present. Most people. Still married and had children in this spiritual world. They live very comfortably in the spiritual world. They think the end of life is there. Regrettably. They miss the more important next stop in life. That is starting from the spiritual world. We will eventually reach the next one. A more beautiful world. Spiritual world. The spiritual world is a mirror of the spiritual world. Spiritual world. 
in front of the clear mirror of the spiritual world, clear at a glance. The spiritual world is a beam of light. The spiritual world is illuminated by this beam of light, transparent, nowhere to hide. Looking at life from the spiritual world, everything is understood in the heart. All the troubles in the spiritual world, all confusion, all the tangles. It's just that human beings have trapped themselves in a cocoon. This is what I have always emphasized in treating mental illness, the fundamental reason why we must start from the spiritual level.